Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at the Fenir C 2 in 1 oscilloscope and transistor tester. This is the model DSO TC2. I got this off of AliExpress, I believe, maybe Banggood. And this device is pretty cool. This cost $50. I bought this. This is not um, was not sent to me for review. I paid for this. So this is a transistor tester, and it will automatically test and identify various kinds, NPN and PNP transistors, N-channel and P-channel FETs, junction FETs, diodes, thyristors, as well as passive components, resistors, inductors, capacitors, and so on. It will figure out the pin definitions automatically, which pin is doing what function. It'll automatically read infrared codes off of a remote for whatever good that is, but it does it. Um, continuity test, zero to um, 16 volt input voltage measurement, PWM output. So you can use this as a PWM generator for testing and debugging and creating other circuits. Uh, it will also do temperature and humidity functionality if you stick a DHT11 or similar sensor in it. That's like what you'd use with an Arduino, for example, temperature sensor. It is also an oscilloscope. It is a 200 kilohertz oscilloscope with a 2.5 mega sample per second sampling rate. Um, it has a uh, 80 kilohertz, 5 volt PWM input generator, like I mentioned already. It will test voltage signals up to 400 volts through the oscilloscope function, not through the DC meter function. That's a huge difference. Um, it has full triggering, auto, single, and run mode, just like a normal oscilloscope would have, as well as uh, an auto function to where you have the signal on and it's not set. You hit auto, the scope will find the signal, so to speak, and um, and get you at least in the ballpark of what your signal is looking like on the scope. So that's what it says it does. This was, again, $50. I've already had this open, but let's go through what's in the box um, fairly quickly. We have a manual. Um, half of this is in Chinese, and the other half is in English. And I have to say, having bought a lot of gadgets uh, off of AliExpress and so on, this is a fairly well put together manual and it's um, it's high quality. It's not a microscopic tiny piece of paper. It comes with all the things you'd expect an oscilloscope to come to. We have come with, we have a probe. This is a uh, 100 megahertz, one or 10 probe, and it can be calibrated to that end. Here is the calibration tool as well as the color bands and all the other little case candy that comes with oscilloscope probes. Uh, we'll get to our device in a second. It comes with a set of alligator clips to hook up directly for testing or whatever. It comes with this adapter, which is MCX to BNC. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. And then it also comes with three grabbers, red, green, and black with DuPont pins on the end. And you would use those for the voltage test functions. And we'll get to that in a second as well. So let's move the box out of the way. Oh, one more thing. And it comes with the hook end for our oscilloscope probe. And what this would do, part of that is because the box is too short, but that would go over the end of the oscilloscope probe. And now instead of a point, we have a hook end. And of course we can pop that off and we can use the pointy end and then there's our ground clip for the scope function. So <clears throat> this device does component testing. As you see here, uh, the KAA is used for voltage testing. The ones, twos, and threes are connected to each other. So a one down here is the same as a one here or a one here. 2 to 2, 3 to 3, those are interconnected. Same number, same connection. Um, the, of course, there's a power button. The menu auto button does a couple functions for us, depending on whether it's long press or short press. And then these are our navigation and testing buttons. On the uh, power end, this is powered. It has an internal battery, 
and it can be charged or run directly off of a USB-C power source. The tester end here is an MCX connector. I believe that's what that is. And that's what this is, is designed to go in there. So this is for input voltage testing. This is our PWM power generator, signal power pulse width modulation signal generator, English, I do speak it. And then that's our digital storage oscilloscope, oscilloscope connection. And what we do with that is that guy goes in there or he goes in that one or he goes in that one, depending on what function we want to do. So let me turn on our signal generator. This is the um, Unity 962 that I've used in videos before. And let me power this guy on. And we're going to do a quick oscilloscope function test. So when you turn him on, you press the power button and he comes up and he asks you, do you want test or oscilloscope? We'll tell it oscilloscope. I'm going to set my frequency over here to 50 kilohertz. I'm going to make sure that I am matching impedance. This is one mega ohm impedance on this guy. That's all this is. So if your input source cannot match, your voltage readings will be off. Um, all right, so we're going to turn this on. There we go. And so you can see that we have one volt peak to peak and we're on one kilohertz uh, frequency coming out of the spectrum or the signal generator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start changing this. This is listed as a 200 kilohertz oscilloscope. It actually, uh, in my testing, has shown that it'll go higher. So we're going to jump to 180 kilohertz right now. Okay. So you'll notice now we're showing 0.83 volts and we're at 180 kilohertz. The specs for this guy is 200 kilohertz bandwidth. So what's going to happen is as I go up in bandwidth, that voltage peak to peak is going to drop. And that will tell us when we hit our minus 3 dB point, what our bandwidth is on this guy. So 0.707 voltage peak to peak or thereabouts is our minus 3 dB uh, signal drop. So we're up to 190 kilohertz. There's 200, 201. I'm going to bump this up by one at a time now. And you can see our voltage peak to peak is dropping off. Okay, there's 3 dB down. We've hit 0.70, so that's pretty close. 268 kilohertz bandwidth. So that's not bad. This is specced out at 200. So that's not bad at all. And it does the regular, um, all the regular scope stuff, and I'm not going to go into a, a scope video. So let me disconnect the oscilloscope part, and let's show some of the component testing features on this guy. Okay, so I've got a uh, transistor stuck in the test ports over here. And this shows us all of our threshold values for this particular transistor and what kind of transistor it is, where the base collector and emitter are at, what port is which one, and again, the values. Um, I went ahead and stuck it in here without showing you that. It's uh, a little bit of a pain in the behind to get a transistor in there, just because you got to get those three legs lined up. So we take that out and let's test a capacitor. So these are just some random, random parts I have. And we'll get that guy in there and lock him down. And then we'll hit test. And he'll come back and tell us that's a 458 nanofarad and it's capacitor. Excellent. Here's a resistor. Lock him in, hit test. There we go, 50K ohm resistor. Pretty cool, huh? And I believe that you don't have to put them in ports one and two when you're testing straight through components. There's a one and three, I don't see what we get. Yep, 
that works too. And it figured out again, same thing, that it's a 50K ohm resistor and it's connected on port one and port three. And uh, the way this is wired, so I could connect this to port one up here and uh, port three down here. Once again, run our test and it's still gonna figure it out. I've actually got it in two, but same thing, all right? And then here's an LED and we'll hook this up in uh, two and three over here. There we go. So it shows us that it's a diode and the characteristics of that diode and it lit it up and which way is forward bias based on the way I have it stuck in the tester. So that's pretty, pretty neat. And it'll, it'll do that with any components um, you have, like it said, JFETs and so on and so forth. <clears throat> that's pretty swank. And then you can just hit the uh, power button, a quick tap, and that lets you change modes on the device. And let me set up and we'll do uh, some quick voltage tests with a battery or something here. So there's a menu that we access by pressing test and hold once we're inside. And that will let us look at all of these tests or these adjustments. So there is the uh, temperature sensors that I mentioned, the DHT11, and I believe that's the temperature sensor as well. Zener diode, PWM output. I've got it on voltage right now. We're testing the nine volt battery. Let me pop that off. That goes to zero millivolts. This is, um, I don't know, this seems like a nice piece of kit to go in, uh, in a go bag and have with you for emergencies, for backups. You have an oscilloscope, which uh, you know works pretty much like an oscilloscope. Let's hook up the probe to it real quickly and see how well that works for us. We need the little adapter. Let's put that on oscilloscope. Let's hook up our scope probe. Let's turn on our function generator again. And let's hook our ground shield to the outside. Now, the beauty about using this as an oscilloscope, um, testing mains voltage with it, should be safe because you are not... Um... Let me turn this down to, let's give it 100 kilohertz on, because you are not, um, you're, you've got a floating ground here. So you shouldn't have any problem with shorting this out. And there's our signal, let me hit auto. And you can see that this is really awkward to hold like this, but that's through our scope probe. And of course the probe changes between 1X and 10X and the probe itself is rated to uh, 100 megahertz. So that is good for the entire range of this particular device as far as testing would go with it. Um, I like it for the component test functionality. That's pretty neat. It's $50. Is it the best oscilloscope you've ever seen? No, this is not. This is very, very low end entry level. If you're looking for an interesting device to tinker with, I recommend this. If you're looking for something to do some component checking, and honestly, I think that's a good function because it's certainly easier for me to put a device into this and read what it is than for me to try and put on my splaining glasses and read tiny print on a component. So in my mind, that's, that's kind of worth the price of entry there that it has an oscilloscope is kind of a bonus function. Has a DVM in it, also a bonus function. So that's pretty neat. And I, I don't expect much for $50. The other thing this has, let me demo this real quick so I haven't showed you. We'll bring him up and we'll put him into test mode. And it should, there we go. This is a Roku remote I'm using here. 
And as I press that, of course, it's also key in my television, but you can see the data codes changing as I press each button. And the user code, I guess, means Roku. I don't really know. But the data code is the combination of whatever IR signal that's coming out of the remote. So that's pretty neat. And I just, uh, <laughs> I just changed my channels on the television. So I lost my video. Anyway, so that's, um, that's kind of a bonus function there. I don't know how useful that is to you. If you're doing some kind of kit building or something like that with an Arduino, that would be fairly useful. So, as I said, this is not lab equipment. I don't expect this thing to be the most accurate measuring device in the world. But it's handy. It's very small. And this will fit easily into a small pouch or something like that in a, in a go bag or a laptop bag or whatever. And that's probably where this is going to end up with me is uh, in my, my bag I carry at work every day, my go bag there. Um, you know, you get all the standard oscilloscope and DVM parts. Um, this little adapter is kind of a deal. I probably, if I intend to use this, I'm going to treat this thing like gold or buy a couple more because without it, you can't hook up to the, to the scope connections itself. But for what it costs, I think it uh, provides some value. Now, keep in mind that for about $120, you can get a 70 megahertz O1 handheld oscilloscope that's about twice this size that is an oscilloscope and a signal generator and has a bigger screen and more functionality. $50, $120. Depends on where you want to get into it at. But if you're just scope curious, this may be the thing that you want to, uh, to get. So guys, in any case, that's all I've got for this video. I hope I haven't gone on too long. Y'all give me a thumbs up if you would. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel already and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified whenever I post any new content. Guys, have a great day. 73.